Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 31st of July, 2011. 47 years ago this day, Ranger 7 crash-landed on the moon, sending back over 4,000 pictures of the lunar surface. As a result, the part of the moon where Ranger 7 crashed was renamed. So today's trivia question is, what was the new name of that region? The answer, of course, will be given at the end. In the last 24 hours, the sun seems to have quieted down quite a bit. We've had just two sea flares, and the X-ray background seems to be dropping. So let's take a look at the active regions and see why this is the case. We have five numbered regions on the disk at the moment. The region out ahead of 1260 has been labelled 1265. Although it was growing yesterday, now seems to have stabilised and may even be weakening a bit. Regions 1260, 1261 and 1263 are very impressive regions still, but all seem to be relatively stable and not associated with any particular growth or uh, change. Region 1264 reappeared, but is still just a couple of very weak spots. So all in all we have a situation of stability or maybe even slight decay, which explains the lower levels of activity. So let's take a look at the evolution of these regions, and I think the most interesting region to look at is region 1261. It has shown remarkable changes over the last four days, both in the sunspot structure and also in the magnetic structure of the region. I've created here a montage of images taken 24 hours apart by the HMI instrument on SDO, and you can see how much it has changed from the 28th of July to until today. The region starts off as a relatively normal looking region, in fact dwarfed by the following region 1263. <laughs> However in the south it seems to develop new spots. Those spots become larger and spread further west. In fact they almost seem to be rotating around the major leading spot. And spot rotation is one of the major indicators for flare potential. And in the last 24 hours there seem to be some new spots developing out ahead of the region. In the Transition Region movie, I'd like you to still concentrate on those two prominences on the west limb. They're looking more and more dynamic and, and thus have the potential to lift off, so they're worth keeping an eye on. When looking at coronal evolution, let's return to our three favourite regions. Again, let's do a comparison. We have Region 1260, which is quite a strong region and is quite variable, but has only produced a few minor sea flares. We have 1261, which seems to be the, this is the brightest region and the most variable, and that's been producing the flares. And we have 1263, which is the largest region with the strongest spots, that is very weak indeed by comparison. So field strength and size are not necessarily an indicator of flare potential, although they do help. The Soho Coronagraph data show us that we've had three very weak coronal mass ejections off of the northeast limb. These are probably associated with our three favourite regions, However, they don't produce explosive events. That's probably why these coronal mass ejections are not particularly spectacular. Taking a look at the solar wind, we see that the temperature and the velocity of the solar wind have both increased, in fact, as I predicted yesterday, but the density has remained relatively low. The high energy electron flux has plummeted by over an order of magnitude since yesterday, and we still have no sign of a proton event from the sun. The auroral zones in both the northern and southern hemisphere seem a lot more agitated than they have been for several days. And the KP index reached minor storm levels for at least a while in the last 24 hours. This is associated with what is called a co-rotating interaction region, which is where a high speed and a slow speed solar wind stream interact with one another. Several folks over the last few weeks have suggested that I include a magnetospheric simulation. So I thought I should explain what the simulation involves before I use it. There are four parts of the simulation. The top left shows the magnetospheres interaction with the incoming solar wind's magnetic field. The top right shows the solar wind pressure on the magnetosphere. In the bottom left there is a picture of something called the ionospheric convection, which is just a circulation pattern resulting from the interaction of magnetic fields and electric fields. In the bottom right are the parameters that you're familiar with from the ACE data that I show regularly, the temperature, density, velocity and strength of the, ma of the magnetic field in the solar wind. So in summary then, the x-ray background is at the B3 level, the sunspot number has risen to 104, the radio sun intensity has risen to 113, the solar wind speed has increased to 590 km per second with a density of less than one proton per cubic centimetre, and geospace conditions have reached minor storm levels at times. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is there's a good chance of getting more sea flares, though the chance of getting M and X flares is steadily reducing, the sunspot number will remain high. The chance of getting coronal mass ejections is very good, solar wind speed will remain high, 
but the chances of getting a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is very poor. In the slightly longer term, there is a region about two days behind the northeast limb, so we should start seeing evidence of that in the coronal movies uh, tomorrow. So the answer to the trivia question as to what was the new name of the area where Ranger 7 crash landed was Mare Cognitum, which stands for the Known Sea. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.